hurry up, my stupid computer. I'm on the radio, <laughs> guys. Come on, give me. Okay, ask Moses. What is the Torah source prohibiting premarital sex? Uh, Maimonides writes that non-marital intercourse falls under the biblical prohibition of, quote, there shall not be any promiscuous men among the Jewish people, nor shall there be any promiscuous women among the Jewish people. However, Rabbi Nachmanides disagrees with this derivation, maintaining that the prohibition is implicit in the biblical injunction, and the earth shall not be filled with immorality. So mm. the text in the Torah is certainly not explicit that mm -mm. premarital sex is forbidden, yeah. but all the rabbis down through history have pretty much said, you're not allowed to do this. Mm. I was looking on your site today, and there was a link to uh, Jusip. It's like Jewish gossip, and yes. uh, that is a fabulous site. Yes, yes. Yeah, I really like it. I liked what I saw. It's like Gawker for the Jews. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's fun. I, I, uh, I'm glad. I, I'm glad you turned me on to that. Your your site turned me on to that. Um, and one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about is uh, I know we in previous conversations we've talked about acupuncture. Uh, how often do you do it now? I go twice a week. And you're a big and believer that it's been a, a tremendous benefit to you. Yes, it has. Um, largely or partly because um, at least in the previous semester I go to an acupuncture college because it's cheaper and uh, in the previous semester I had two beautiful acupuncturists I mean these are like college girls I mean <laughs> and they're touching me and sticking needles in me and they're all very concerned about my bowel movements and <laughs> it's it's really wonderful stuff <laughs> but I haven't been up to um, secure the same level of uh, of young beauty for for this this semester, so it's kind of uh -huh. got me down, yeah. and I'm so I'm not quite getting the full benefit of the acupuncture. Uh, the did you did you read there was a, a a big study that was just released about the validity of acupuncture, and uh, uh, the study sort of concluded it's the placebo effect. Fascinating. Doesn't matter to you. You're still you're still going to do it. Yeah. No. It's it. It, like, I started it because I had tendonitis in my elbow um, from, like, photographing porn stars. Um, I was holding this, like, 12-pound camera, <laughs> and I was going to events, and I was photographing them, and, and it, like, pulled the tendons away from my bone in my elbow, and so it was a real problem. So I kept going to Western doctors, and there was nothing that they could they could do. They could shoot me up with painkillers, or they could do surgery and try to reattach the tendons. And then I had a friend who said he had a sim similar problem, and he went to an acupuncturist. And the acupuncturist worked, and all the Western things did not work. So mm -hmm. then I said, oh, well, they, they try to treat the whole body. That's the theory anyway. Right. So, um, so when it worked on my elbow, I said, hmm, let's keep going with this. And I, I found it did, like, pep up my energy a bit. Uh -huh. They give me this really bitter uh, Chinese tea powder stuff that, that I drink every day. So right. I have no idea how it works, and uh, it just seems to work for me. And, but and, and, uh, and you're big study, I'll have to yeah. Google that. Yeah, you're convinced that that it works, and so even if even if the study conclusion was it's the placebo effect, you're not buying it. No, 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 no I don't. I, I, it, it seems to work for me, but who knows, it could be a, a placebo effect. I'm not... I, I'm not going to argue with the study. It, it, mm. I'm just saying it worked for me, but uh, it could be the placebo effect. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, you're open to the idea that it may be the placebo effect. Sure. Mm. Uh, so here's the thing I'm kind of coming to the conclusion of about you, and the more we talk, uh, the more I'm sort of getting some insights, and, and you're very... Um, you speak very well, and you're you're obviously a guy who's really seeking. I mean, this is your and and and, and it's an inherited trait because uh, because your father's uh, religious devotion, um, and that you rejected that and then embraced another religion, to me is all about it's it's you're on a you're on a on a search, and I and I want and I, I think I asked you this before. Um, and I don't recall your answer, so if I if this is repetitive, forgive me. Um, if I talk to you in ten years, are you still going to be an Orthodox Jew? If you talk to to me in ten years, I'll still be deeply rooted in Judaism. Um, whether or not I'll be Orthodox, uh, that that will be an open question. 
but I'll certainly be keeping the Sabbath. I'll be keeping Kadashirut. I'll be studying the Torah, and I will be part of an organized and traditional uh, Jewish com- Jewish community. Mm-hmm. But I, I think, like the the truth seeking thing. I was raised on stories of the Protestant Revo- Reformation, what happened in the 16th century. And it, did you ever see the 1966 Best Picture Oscar-winning movie called A Man for All Seasons? No. Okay, I saw that film when I was 10 years old, and it's about some uh, English cleric in the time of Henry VIII and how he stood up for what he believed and lost his head. And uh, so I was raised on stories of Martin Luther, who, when put before the Catholic uh, Inquisition, said, Here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God. And uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, about all the the Protestants who got martyred by the the Catholics in the 16th, 17th century. So I was kind of raised with this fevered uh, idealization of the pursuit of truth at all costs, and, and you pursue the truth, and then you take... All the all the costs, you know, even if it's your own life, and so I'm I'm still like, I'm still like Jesus on the cross. <laughs> How so? How's that? Well, you know, I'm I'm kind of that 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 fanatical, you know. This is what I stand for, and you can nail me to a cross, and I still here I stand. I can do no other. So I'm still, you know, I've still got that that Jesus crucifixion, uh, Protestant martyr thing, just like burned into my psyche and so it's it's quite weird in it's and it's coming out in this jewish and blogging uh obsession but it, it's still there it's still you know you can you can feel the outlines of the the, the protestant martyrs burning at the stake in, when in you my work. when you see graven images of jesus christ uh what what is your thought um, it, it's repellent to me um, because I was raised a Seventh Day Adventist where they don't have iconography, uh-huh. um, and and then it's certainly not a, a Jewish thing. So both my background and my my present rebels against uh, images of Jesus, particularly torn and pierced and bleeding. It's it's uh-huh. very uh, I I hate the whole cannibalistic human sacrifice angle, which is at the very core of Christianity. Well, it's the idea that uh, that one man would suffer so much for the sins of others. I guess is the it's really the basis of Christianity, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's the idea that God requires this. God uh-huh. requires human sacrifice before He can be reconciled to humanity, uh-huh. and it's just a, a completely repugnant, uh, totally pagan, contrary to the Hebrew Bible notion that is just, you know, really repellent for for a Jew. It comes out of uh, Hellenic mystery religions, the idea that salvation can come from above and that by, you know, immersing yourself in the flesh and the blood of the God that you can become one and divine and live forever. It's, and the whole notion that what you believe is more important than what you do, these are very foreign, un-Jewish and uh, disturbing and, and not at all attractive ideas to me. This is TalkRadio1.com. Luke, Luke Ford, it's always fun to uh, talk with you. His blog is LukeFord.net, and it's uh, his views on everything from uh, uh, the women that he meets to religious views to uh, reviews of other radio shows, and uh, it, it's always good to talk to you. I, I, I always enjoy it. You are a very provocative guy. Thank you. Thanks, Luke.